Hi everyone, um, it's Jackie and I'm back from the dead to talk about Pretty Little Liars one last time. Now, as I told you guys, uh, what, a year and a half ago, I decided that I was not going to watch PLL anymore due to my frustrations over the unsatisfactory reveals and the unnecessary ship drama. Well, um, I did stick with that promise. I have not been watching PLL. However, the series finale aired this week and I thought to myself, you know, you gave PLL so much of your time, so much of your life, um, why not watch the finale for old time's sake and maybe share some thoughts with any people out there who still subscribe or care about what I have to say. So it's 12.07 in the morning as I'm filming this. Um, but I don't know, I was just not tired and I thought, you know, why not? Uh, just for old time's sake, like I said. So I'm just gonna talk about my thoughts on the series finale and, you know, just just to thank all of you guys for watching all my theory videos and, um, you know, just a last hurrah because I don't really know what I'm going to do with this channel now. Um, really no other uh, TV show has a YouTube fandom like PLL does or really has theories you can make about it. Also, I'm going to college in the fall. I don't know if I really want to be filming videos in a dorm, especially when I'm going to have a roommate and other people living around me. So I feel like that just wouldn't be convenient. Um, I might maybe someday in the future come back here or do recaps of shows that air only during the summer. But, you know, um, I don't know. It's still up in the air, so... Um, the, the channel will still be here, all my videos will still be here, I just don't know when or if I'll be making new material after this. So, I've already been gone for like a year and a half, so, um, I'm not really sure. Um, we'll see how it goes. So, anyway, the series finale of Pretty Little Lies, which is entitled Till Death Do Us Part. Um, I had thoughts about this episode. I didn't watch it live, because I was watching The Bachelorette. But I was reading on Twitter what was happening, and I was so mad when I was reading the tweets. And then I, you know, vented my anger. I, you know, texted my mom furiously, like, oh my god, can you believe they did this? And um, I finally got to watch the episode for myself. And I think I didn't hate it as much once I had some time to cool down. There were things I liked about it, things I didn't like, and things that I really hated. But I think overall it was an enjoyable episode. Obviously there were flaws with it, but this is Pretty Little Liars and you can't have, you, I don't think anyone expected every single question to get answered on this episode. There are things that we will never know. There are things that they will never answer, but we shouldn't be surprised by that. Uh, if you take it for what it is, it was a pretty good episode, but that doesn't mean I still don't have problems with it. So I think I'll start off on a positive note about the things I liked about this episode. Um, I'm not going to recap the episode because I'm assuming everyone's seen it by now, so if you haven't, spoilers for the series finale of PLL. Uh, what I really, really loved was Mona's ending. You guys know that I was always a big fan of Mona, even though she was, you know, not necessarily a very nice person. She did do lots of bad things. Mona is no idiot. She is one smart chick. And she is always one step ahead of everybody, which is why I loved her. Because I just think, you know, Mona always surprises you. And you can't put anything past Mona Vanderwall. Um, I really loved this ending with her having Mary Drake and Alex, who is Spencer's evil twin, um, in this dollhouse. And she's just, you know, playing her doll with her dolls one last time. Mona really won the game. Like... Are any, is anybody surprised? She is a genius. You know, you can't underestimate Mona Vanderwall. And for anybody who didn't notice, the cop that arrested Alex was actually Mona's French boyfriend, which is how she got Mary and Alex to her new dollhouse in France. Like, how does she do these things? Oh, Mona. 
I love, love, love Mona. <laughs> She's always been a favorite in my house. Like me and my mom, my stepdad, like we all love Mona. She's just amazing. Um, I loved Ezra's reference to Arya's iconic ugly cry from the um, ski lift in season four. Oh, good to know that they um, um, know like our memes. And, um, you know that I've never been a very big Ezria fan just because of the whole teacher-student dynamic, which I've never really been able to get past. As some of, uh, some of Ezra's other questionable things that he's done, like seducing Arya to write a book about Allie, um, yikes. But I really appreciated the way that he handled the news about Arya's infertility. Um, you know, how he told her, this doesn't change how I feel about you, and I will still be the happiest man knowing that you are marrying me, and it's not going to change how I feel about us. And I will still have a family with you if you want to adopt or have a surrogate or whatever, because I love you. And I think that was really sweet that he was there for her during one of the most difficult moments of her life. Let me just say, though, I wouldn't despair for Arya too much because on television, characters are often told they're infertile and then they end up being perfectly fertile. Um, let's take Meredith on Grey's Anatomy, who was told she could not get pregnant. Then she got pregnant twice without medical intervention. Twice! After being told that she could not have children. Then there was Brooke on One Tree Hill, who her Brooke discovered that she was infertile in the exact same way because she thought she was pregnant and she went to the doctor and they told her she couldn't have children. Um, I think that's a little odd because I feel like they would, you would just go to the doctor and they would like, you know, test your pee and be like, you're not pregnant. Not be like, yes, we found out that you're not pregnant and you can never have children. <laughs> I just feel like, I feel like that wouldn't happen, but whatever, it's television, it doesn't have to make sense all the time. Um, and then, well, Brooke was told that she could never have children and she conceived twins naturally without medical intervention after being told that she was infertile. So, Arya, you'll probably end up pregnant in a couple years. Like, don't despair. You and Ezra will probably have triplets with the way this show goes. So, everything's gonna work out. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Arya's probably okay, knowing to the television track record. <laughs> um, I also, I loved, loved... Troyan's acting in this episode. Troyan is by far the most talented actress on Pretty Little Liars. I've always been like, you know, saying hashtag free Troyan because Troyan is just so talented and just and just in everything. She she acts, she writes, she directs. She's amazing and my favorite by far. I really enjoyed getting to see her play these two characters. And for everyone who was criticizing Troyan's accent, I saw a lot of British people online saying that it was actually a very accurate accent. It sounded, um, cockney to me. You know, like a East London sort of accent. So maybe not the typical British accent you hear, but still, I don't- I didn't think it was bad. I mean, what do I know? I'm American. I didn't think it was that horrible. It's just, like, not the stereotypical British accent you hear. So, I also loved- loved that Ren ended up being involved somehow. You know, um, as I said before, I believe I said this before, Ren was my first ever A suspect when I first started watching the show, like back when I was binging season one, I thought Ren was A. Then I went off for a little while, for a hot minute I thought Arya was A, and then I abandoned that. And then I was convinced that Bethany was A for so long, you saw all my theories about it. And then once we found out the Charles thing, I went back to thinking it was Ren. <laughs> So, Ren, I've always thought he was shady, and I just, I always thought he, if he wasn't A, he had something to do with the A-team and Uber A, A-D, whatever we're calling it now. I haven't been watching the show, I just watched the finale. Um, and I was sort of right. I know I had a theory before that, I, well, I thought Ren was going to be Charles, which wasn't true, but I thought that the ultimate A that we were going to see at the end would be a girlfriend of Ren. I thought that girlfriend would be Bethany Young, which was wrong, but I still got the whole Ren girlfriend thing right, so I was a teeny bit right, you know? Um, other things I liked, um, I did like, uh, Hannah's pregnancy because, you know, oh, that's nice for her, I like Hannah, I like Caleb. I'm a little troubled by the fact that all these 24-year-olds are obsessed with having children, like, you're 24, <laughs> um, you have so much time to have babies, but, you know, it's TV. 
whatever. Um, and I do like how Arya was happy for Hannah, even though she just received this devastating news, because, you know, that's what being a friend is. It means being happy for them, even when you're hurting. Um, the wine moms. That was the greatest. Oh, I love that whole scene with, like, Pam didn't drink for a year after that. We'll never know how they got out of the basement, but it was clear that it's clear that it was an emotionally scarring experience. And I just, I loved that scene. I thought it was so funny. Um, I liked the Toby-Emily friendship, like, you know, Toby saying he would babysit um, Emily's twins, and um, Emily saying that she always loved Bobby together. You know, I loved their friendship, and I kind of felt like it fell to the wayside for a while there, so I was, it was nice to see some of that. Um, I love that Spencer and Toby played Scrabble and they played the same song they played in season one. Oh my god, my Spoby heart. Oh, 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 I have a Spoby phone case. That's how much I love Spencer Hastings and Tobias Cavanaugh. <laughs> um, even when I quit watching PLL, I still had this on my phone. So, um, just Scrabble is such, oh, I have a Scrabble Town necklace too, which you've seen before, the Spoby shirt. So that just, I love that throwback to season one relationship goals. I also, there are some people who are now saying after that episode that they think Alex, Spencer's twin, was in love with Arya. And I think that's kind of an interesting thought, especially because I, I was always wondering, why does A go so easy on Arya? I always felt like Arya received the least punishment out of all the girls. And it's possible that Alex Drake was in love with Arya. I mean, hey, that makes sense, actually. So, hmm. I think that's everything I liked. So, let's move on to what I didn't like. Um, uh, as I said before, I am not an Alison De Laurentiis fan. Um, I have been watching this season, so I apologize if I'm wrong. But I don't think she really ever made amends with the people she's hurt or apologized and that bothers me that she gets to go straight to the happy ending when she hasn't really earned it but I mean I guess I just have to let that go after all this time so uh the Melissa mask thing that doesn't make any sense to me was Melissa ever actually there was like was that Melissa when she was talking to Spencer with the horse or is that Mona as Melissa how could Mona have a mask of Melissa that is so realistic that she literally looks like she's just like she's actually Melissa. Nobody knew that was a mask. Spencer didn't know that was a mask. That's just weird to me. I that's so not realistic. That bugs me. Also, where did, so was Melissa never there? I just don't understand. Um, Caleb fought for so much of this episode. I feel like that was unnecessary. The whole comment of them not having a honeymoon. Um, and like I just don't. Why did they give Hannah Mayer in a courthouse wedding? Hannah deserved the big wedding with the dress and, you know, the cake and all that stuff because that's just, I feel like that's what Hannah would have wanted. I feel like she kind of got screwed in that aspect. Also, the fact that Hannah and Caleb were fighting so much can kind of make it seem like they're having a baby to save their marriage, which is so problematic. I mean, I'm not saying that's the case, but that's how it makes it look. And it's just not good. Um, there are lots of unanswered questions but you know I really didn't go into this expecting them to be answered because of Marlene's track record. I'll just mention a couple things. I'm still confused what Bethany Young had to do with any of this. Like how did she get Allison's top and bracelet? Was this explained and I just wasn't watching it? Because I've heard nothing about this. I've been following the show on Twitter and reading recaps and I don't think this was ever explained. Like did she just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time? I don't understand how she connected to all of this. It seems very strange. Also, was Sarah Harvey's motive for being Black Veil slash Redcoat ever explained? Because what bothered me about that, other than, you know, the obvious, like, this unimportant character being these two major parts, why would she leave her life to help Cece, who she just met, ruin people's lives? Like, what was in it for her? Did they ever explain that? If they did, please put it in the comments, because I am genuinely confused. <laughs> um, what was the whole Maya thing? Did that, was that ever explained? Or did she just have some irrelevant niece who showed up in this, uh, to do like, the second coming? Speaking of, that, and that was so dumb. 
Like, oh, are you telling me that this whole thing is going to start again? Oh my god, I'm so tired. Also, I don't know if anybody else thought this, but I know that Marlene has said before that she's a huge Gossip Girl fan and that she wants to emulate them. That reminded me exactly of the last uh, moment of Gossip Girl, where it was after Serena and Dan's wedding, and we found out there was a new Gossip Girl because, you know, there's always going to be someone on the outside wanting to get in. Who am I now? XOXO. It was literally the exact same thing. Like, they're showing that the story's gonna repeat with new characters. It felt exactly like how Gossip Girl ended, the last scene in Gossip Girl. I wish the scene with Mona had been the last scene, because this felt unoriginal. Speaking of unoriginality, why are there so many freaking twins? Is there something in the water in Rosewood? I mean, first Mary and Jessica. Ooh, before I forget. Another thing I was kind of right about, I thought that Mary and Kavanaugh and Jessica were sisters because of the Mary A. De Laurentiis anagram, which, if you don't remember, Riley Sanitarium is an anagram for Mary A. De Laurentiis. So it turns out Jessica did have a sister who was called Mary, only it was a twin and not Mary and Kavanaugh. So I was kind of onto something, but also kind of wrong. <laughs> um, anyways, back to what I was saying. Lots of twins. Jessica and Mary, Spencer and Alex, so, uh, two evil twins in one town. Um, <laughs> poor little Lily and Grace, Allison and Emily's twins. One of them's gonna end up being evil and trying to ruin the life of the other. Which one do you guys think it is? <laughs> um, oh, that's... Uh, <laughs> so many twins. It's like Marlene can't think of an original idea, so she's just copying this book storyline, but with, like, different people having twins. Like, you get an evil twin, you get an evil twin, everybody gets an evil twin! <laughs> Also, that whole scene where the girls ran into Allie's classroom and were like, he's coming for you. Didn't Marlene say that he was going to be the big bad, like the big villain? And that ended up being a dream. What's up with that? Like, what? <sighs> okay. Um, the things that made me really, really mad. As I said, I'm a huge, huge Spoby shipper. And while I can delight in the fact that they are still in love with each other and that it was Toby who figured out who the real Spencer was, um, but how did Spencer know what book he was referring to when Alex gave him the book and Spencer wasn't there? Um, and I also loved the part where Alex was like, oh, I can see in his eyes he's in love with me. And Mary says, no, he's in love with Spencer. I love that. I, like, wanted to stand up and cheer. Like, yes, 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 Toby's in love with Spencer. Always has been, always will be. But I was still bummed, especially at first, that Emily and Allison are engaged with twins. Caleb are married and expecting a baby. Ezra and Arya are married and they're planning to adopt. Spoby. Okay, they're hard, they still have feelings for each other, but we didn't see basically any romantic interaction. The, the kiss with Toby, that ended up being Alex. The sex with Toby, both times, ended up being Alex. So basically all the great Spoby moments of this season that I saw on my Tumblr dashboard ended up being Alex. So I kind of feel like we got gypped. You know, I feel like they should have gotten more closure showing that they're together again and they're happy. And then Marlene said in the interview, oh, well, in my head, they live together in Philly and they're engaged. Well, why couldn't you say that in the show? She said that they wanted to do a double wedding, but thought that it was too much or too unrealistic. So, like, having a gazillion evil twins is totally realistic, but having a double wedding isn't. Really, Marlene King? Why can't you let me have this one nice thing after all the years I gave you? Um, I feel like I was gonna say something else, but now I forgot. Something else about Spoby. I don't remember. But if I think of it, I'll, like, comment it or something. I don't remember now. And there was one thing that pissed me off more than anything. And even now, days later, I'm still mad about it. And that is what Marlene did to Toby. Um, we already know that Toby was raped by Jenna, and yes, it was rape because she was forcing him to have sex with her. He did not willingly consent. He did it because he felt like he had no other choice, and that's what a rape is. Marlene has never called this rape, nor has Jenna ever paid for raping Toby. Um, 
And now, Alex raped him twice. Because she had sex with him, pretending to be Spencer. He did not consent to sex with Alex. He consented to sex with Spencer, and that was a lie. That's, that's rape. So, Toby has now been raped three times. Marlene has never said that it's a rape. He has never acknowledged that Toby is a rape survivor or dealt with the emotional trauma that he must feel from being sexually assaulted on multiple occasions. What did Toby do to deserve this? It's just really, it disgusts me, to be honest. And I just, it, it, it truly disgusts me. I don't know how else to describe it. It's, it's really gross and Toby deserves so much better than that. I just feel like as a Spoby fan, they could have given us more. As a Toby fan, I feel slighted. And that's really the biggest disappointment for me because, you know, it's just really wrong, in my opinion, especially the Toby thing. And I just don't understand how I'm supposed to feel bad for Alex, like, after this. Like, I, I don't even think her motive made sense. Like, I get, she said she wanted a family, so then why didn't she just, like, tell Spencer truth. Why did she try to ruin Spencer's life? I don't understand. You know, it's just so bizarre. But, you know, if you take it for what it was, I think it wasn't a bad episode. But there was still a lot left to be desired. So, I came back from the dead for this one PLL recap. Um, and I don't really know what the future of this channel will be. If I do come back, I will probably have a new channel name. But, you know, uh, stay tuned, um, stay subscribed if you are so inclined. You can also follow me on Twitter at Karevs Wilson and on Tumblr, karevsprincess.tumblr.com if you want to stay in contact with me. Um, and that's about it. So thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I had so much fun doing them. And um, I'm really thankful that, you know, I got hundreds of people to subscribe to me because I never thought that was going to happen. So thanks and we'll see what the future holds. All right, this is Jackie aka Mainline Mysteries signing off. Bye guys!